Hey guys, it's Chris. From giant walls that didn't really work to people who stole millions from innocent workers, here are nine of the biggest lies in history. Number 9. The Great Wall of China The Great Wall of China is one of the most important historical feats and is a wonder of the world. Because of its grand nature and history, there are numerous beliefs about what it was, what it is, and what it's for. Most people think of the Great Wall as an impenetrable force. For example, many movies and TV shows have stated that the Great Wall was for defense, and that's true to an extent. However, it was never a major defense fortification, outside of looking intimidating. In fact, many people conquered the wall, including one big invasion that led to the fall of the Ming Dynasty, who helped create the majority of the Great Wall. That's another misconception about the wall. It's not unified. People seem to think it's a solid line all across China, but there are many parts of the wall that are destroyed and it's more accurate to say it's a network of walls than one very long stretch. If you look at an overhead map of China, you'll see many layers to the Great Wall itself. Number 8. D-Day In World War II, the Allies were in a tough spot. The United States had just come into the war and was making headway in Africa. But due to the Axis power and their control over Europe, breaking into the continent was not easy. Eventually, they would hatch a plan known as D-Day and invade through Normandy in France, but getting the Germans away from that part of the country was paramount for the plan to work. So they decided to use a wide variety of lies to make sure that the Germans weren't there, including using an inflatable army to make the Germans think they were going to attack from one base of operations instead of another. The Ghost Army, as it would later be known, was a dummy tactic used to confuse the Axis powers into thinking where the armies and tanks were, when they were actually somewhere else. In regards to the D-Day invasion, they lined up an entire battalion of those dummy tanks on the banks of England where the Germans could see them. They even put General Patton next to them to show how real they were. Patton was a force of nature in World War II, as well as one of the best generals in the Allied ranks. So for him to be there was a big hint that this was the true army, even when it wasn't really. The other ways the lies were told to ensure the success of Normandy was the use of spies and double agents. They would tell those that they were close to on the German side of things that they'd seen things, heard things, or scouted things that stated that the Allies were anywhere but Normandy. While the Germans were focused on the fronts that they were told to focus on, they lessened their forces near Normandy, and thus these tactics were a huge success, almost single-handedly changing the war through a bit of sleight of hand in camouflage. Granted, D-Day was not easy and many men died on the beaches of France in June of 1945. But if these lies hadn't been told and diverted the bulk of the forces away, it would have been a massacre, and World War II likely wouldn't have ended in the way that history knows that it ended. Number 7. Columbus Day In many nations, the use of holidays is a way of bringing people together to celebrate certain points of the year, including giving some workforces a much-needed day off to relax and enjoy time with family. Across the world, there are many holidays that are uniformly shared and celebrated, but few are as controversial as Columbus Day, which is a holiday that is technically built on a lie. If you're curious as to how that's possible, it's very simple. The very basis of the holiday is to celebrate Christopher Columbus and how he discovered America. However, as history books and other documents will tell you, not only did he not discover America, he never set foot in North America at all. He landed on islands close to North America, including the Caribbean islands like the Bahamas. He did discover certain places in what we now know as Central and South America, but not the United States proper like the songs and stories tell. So how did this whole lie start? It's a bit complicated to describe the true origins, but in 1792, the Society of St. Tammany celebrated the first Columbus Day in New York, which was 300 years after Columbus had supposedly discovered America. And it wasn't until 100 years later that the president, Benjamin Harrison, established the celebration of the holiday. But by that point in time, a lot of key details have been glossed over by history, and the story of how he discovered America was born. In truth, Christopher Columbus was not a kind person. In fact, he was a person who went to various islands and would enslave and hurt the indigenous people. 
so much so that states and countries refused to celebrate Columbus Day because they know the truth, and thus called the holiday Indigenous Peoples Day. Which leads us to the final lie about this holiday. Not only did Christopher Columbus not discover America, there were already people there when the first settlers from Europe arrived. That's why they're referred to as Native Americans. Number 6. Victor Lustig Oftentimes lies are told in order to get you something simple or to divert attention away from you. But one man named Victor Lustig took the notion of lying to another level when he sold the Eiffel Tower. And in fact, he sold it twice over his lifetime, showing that even the biggest of lies can work with the right people involved. So how did this happen? As with all clever cons and scams, it was all about timing. In 1925, a newspaper ran an article in France that noted that the upkeep of the Eiffel Tower was getting way too high. This was long before the Eiffel Tower was considered too treasured to be taken down, just so you know. So Lustig hatched a rather simple con. He impersonated a government official and called six scrap metal dealers to a meeting. Using the paper as evidence, he noted that the government couldn't maintain upkeep of the tower, and so they wanted to sell it for scrap metal in order to save money and remove some stress. Needless to say, had this been true, the scrap metal dealer would have had a lot to gain. Sure enough, it was sold, and Lustig fled. Once the yard worker realized the truth, he couldn't go to the police out of sheer embarrassment for what he had fallen for. After many other cons in a rather legendary career, Lustig was caught and sent to Alcatraz and died not long after. He was even noted to have gotten the respect of Al Capone because of his moxie and ability to work a scam. And you have to admit, Lustig was very good at selling lies if he was able to pull off the Eiffel Tower scam twice. Number 5. The Cherry Tree Story More Than Likely Didn't Happen There are many things that history has taught us when it comes to our legends in history. As we often like to glamorize them at times and look beyond what they actually did in their lives regardless of the consequences. This even happens with legendary presidents like Abraham Lincoln or the first president George Washington. Thankfully, most of what George Washington did was good in the context of the times and wasn't a full-on lie. But one of the most famous stories about George Washington is that of the time he chopped down his father's cherry tree and said, I cannot tell a lie, and admitted to doing it when his father confronted him about it. This story was popular because George Washington was a very honest man, and he felt that being honest was a policy all men should have. So it's not hard to see that this story became popular in regards to the common people because it further paints Washington as an honest figure. So how do we know it's a lie in terms of the story? That would be because Washington was a very private man, and many historians doubt he would ever have told that story in the first place even if it was real, as he likely would have viewed it as a shameful tale and not one promoting honesty. Not to mention, it was confirmed to be fake by the actual person who invented the story, Mason Locke Weems, the first biographer of George Washington. He told many other myths, but this one was the most popular. Number 4. The Trojan Horse Mythologies of many different races and nations have been the backbone of many stories told across time, and Greek mythology is one that still influences nations to this day, with its tales of heroes, gods, and men and women defying the odds or succumbing to them. One of the grandest tales in Greek mythology is that of the Trojan War. A war started by gods and men, and one that put two powerful nations against one another. But it also holds a great lie still referenced to this day, the Trojan Horse. In the war, Troy had taken the Spartan king's wife, known as Helen of Troy. The battle between these two nations saw massive sieges, one-on-one -on -one struggles with heroes, and even the gods themselves entering the fray. But the turning point was when the Greeks made a giant horse, meant to be a peace offering for the Trojans. They sent in a scant crew to send in the horse and left. The Trojans welcomed the horse and went on their way. What they didn't know was that some of the Greek army was inside the horse. And thus, when night came and the Trojans slept, the Greeks attacked, wiping most of them out and winning the war. The story is an emphatic tale of victory, as well as the power of tricks and misdirection. And the term Trojan horse is now used in pop culture to refer to a shell hiding a deeper threat. The problem is that the Trojan horse likely didn't exist, not the least of which is because while the horse was loosely referenced in the Iliad, which detailed the Trojan War in great detail, it wasn't heavily detailed and expanded upon until much later. 
Furthermore, while evidence of Troy exists, we can't prove that the war itself happened. Not to mention stuffing so many men inside the horse and keeping them silent, and then springing the trap on the Trojans without anyone making a single mistake? That would have been very hard to do. More than likely, the Trojan horse was a massive battering ram that was used to take down the gates of Troy so the Greeks could enter. Again, should the war have happened at all. Number 3. The Ponzi Scheme Charles Ponzi started out as a very legitimate businessman, one who realized a loophole of sorts in buying and selling coupons for more than they're worth. So he decided to start buying these and selling them for more money. He needed investors though. Sure enough, he convinced people to invest and for a while it was working. His profits were way, way up. But then the coupon market dried up and he still owed money to people. So he devised a new tactic. He would get money from new investors and would pay the old ones off. And he did this for years. And it was working. Until he got caught. He was sentenced to five years in jail. And in total, the people who invested in him lost $20 million. This act of fraud would forever be known as the Ponzi scheme, and it's a term used to this day. And as for the scam itself, it's one of the most popular scams that people fall for. It's easy to set up and to pass off as successful for a very long time if no one is looking in the right place, which was later used to great effect by the infamous Bernie Madoff who trumped everything that Ponzi did in droves, including not just swindling people out of millions of dollars, but rather getting $65 billion out of them. And by his own admission, the only reason he stopped the scheme was because he felt compelled to tell his sons what was really going on, and that led to his arrest and reveal of the scheme. Many people continue to use the Ponzi scheme for their own gains, showing that this is one lie that just about anyone can do. Number 2. Anastasia. The mystery of what happened to Grand Duchess Anastasia Romanoff of Russia was one of the most compelling tales of the 20th century. If you do not know the story, Anastasia was the daughter of Tsar Nicholas II, and when the Russian Revolution happened, the entire royal family was wiped out. Or so many people were told to believe. However, rumors started to spread that one of the Tsar's daughters, Anastasia, was alive. This gave hope to the Russian people as well as certain other extended members of the royal family that were left alive, and the search began for her. And numerous women claimed to be her, including one Anna Anderson. In 1920, she found herself in a mental hospital, and as she wouldn't give her identity, she was labeled as Jane Doe. That was until she started stating she was in fact Anastasia Romanoff. Given that Anastasia went missing four years earlier, it got a lot of buzz especially when she continued to say she was Anastasia. Even royal family members believed it could have been true, especially when she gave facts about the royal family that only someone close to them would have known. She continued this until she died in 1984. Unfortunately for her, the real Anastasia Romanoff was found in 2009, and not long after, Anna was found to be Franziska Shanskowska of Poland instead. Anastasia herself was right where many feared she would be, dead alongside her family at the hands of the Bolsheviks. That being said, the story of Anastasia lived on, even being made into an animated film. Number 1. The Clinton Affair The office of the President of the United States has yielded many great men over history including some who are deemed legendary in the eyes of the people and history at large. But as with any such great office and power comes those who will lie to save their own skin. One of the greatest lies ever told was that of former President Bill Clinton. Clinton, by many metrics, was a surprise president. He came after George H.W. Bush, who was expected to win the election for his second term. But a split vote amongst the people on the Republican side of things led to Clinton sneaking in and winning. And he was a guy that many people seemed to like via his very down-to-earth nature. But then he got caught in a scandal when he was stated to have had an affair with an intern named Monica Lewinsky. The affair alone was a scandal as Bill was married to Hillary Clinton, a very popular woman both at that time and now. But what made this a true lie was that he lied about it under oath when prosecuted about it, including saying the now infamous line, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. 
That was a lie, and later on, Clinton admitted it after he was truly cornered, which was a big problem for him. Because not only did he admit that he'd lied, well, he'd lied under oath, which means perjury. Perjury is an impeachable offense, and thus the vote was put out to whether Clinton should be removed from office. The House of Representatives impeached him, but the Senate shot it down. So while he did leave the White House on his own terms, his legacy was forever tarnished and is to this day still kind of mocked. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these lies from history? Which of them do you think is the scariest or maybe the most shocking lie of all? Which one of these lies did you believe when you were told it? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to Worldlist, and I'll see you next time.